Well, good morning, Harvest Church. How's everyone doing today? Doing great. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I feel like today God wants to do business with us here, men and women. Can you say amen? Amen? amen. So is that okay if God just puts his finger on some things in our hearts and does some business with us right here in the house today? Because God is all about, you know, in harvest, we're all about changing lives, aren't we? And doing what? Shaping, shaping destinies. That's what it's all about. And so that's another way of saying do business with God. And so God wants to do some business in each one of our hearts. But you know it's a two-way street, isn't it? See, when you're doing a business transaction, it's a two-way thing with you and someone else doing the business. And so there has to be participation and cooperation on both sides. Can you say amen? amen. And so today, I'd be like, God wants to do some business in our hearts today. And he wants to do something special on the inside of each one of us. We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because if we don't cooperate with the Holy Spirit, then, you know, he's the perfect gentleman. He won't force us to do anything. But if we cooperate with him and we listen to his voice, then he's ready to do business with us all the time. If we turn in our Bibles to the book of Proverbs and chapter 4 and the 20th verse. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 20. I want to look at a few scriptures, a few verses in that place. Thank you for the new Code V version there. So it says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. It says, do not let them depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are, and we're going to stop on this verse, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. They are life to those who find them, and they are health to all their flesh. You see, turn to them and say, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Yeah? Turn to your other neighbor and say, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Okay, now point to yourself and say, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. See, indeed, God's word is life, but it says to those who find it. God starts there by saying, attend or give attention, pay attention to my word. You know, it's so important that each one of us, that we pay attention to the word of God. You know, it's almost like, well, we're reading it, aren't we? But God has to tell us to pay attention to his word, because why? They are life to those who find it, and they are health to all their flesh. How many people want to live long? Amen. Amen. Every single hand should be up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How many people want to live healthy? Yeah. Every single hand up. And so if we want to live long, if we want to live healthy, then we need to give attention to God's word. We need to incline our ears onto what God has to say to us. Because his word is life. His word is health. You know that scripture that says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so there is something inside of God's word that sustains us. God's word has the capacity to sustain us. Amen? And so we need to pay attention to the word of God. I want us to look at another scripture in 2 Timothy and chapter 3. And we're going to look at two verses there. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Okay, so 16, it says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable. Everyone say profitable. We all understand the concept of profit. So there's an advantage for you. There is profit for me inside of the word of God. It says all scripture. So that means from Genesis to Revelation. Now we've just heard what Brother Anthony shared about how God can close doors that no man can open. How he can open doors and no man can shut them. And he gives us that testimony, that example, you know, of um, Marilyn's daughter. Now how God closed one door and opened another door. 
And so there is profit for us to be had in the Word of God, in the Scriptures. And it says it is profitable for doctrine. Everyone say doctrine. doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. Everyone say reproof. reproof. It's profitable for correction. Everyone say for correction. for correction. And then it says it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. Everyone say instruction in righteousness. So God's Word benefits us on many different channels, amen, and in many different areas of our lives. You know, and that's, you know, see, God is the master creator. He's the one who put us together in the first place. And so there's a specific reason why God has done this and made this available to us in, in this way. And you see, God doesn't put anything in just for fun, just as a filler. You know, God doesn't put in just any extras just to fill up the space. He said it's profitable, and then he's quite specific. It's profitable for doctrine, so the doctrine of the Word of God. And then he says it's profitable for reproof, for correction. See, I've been on a journey with God, and I'm still on that journey. Each one of us is still on that journey in our walk with the Lord. But as we go, as we journey with God, okay, there is profit to be had. But that profit and that benefit... It's only to be had if we participate in this transaction with God. If we allow God to do the things that he wants to do, that he's endeavoring to do through his spirit that dwells within us. Can you say amen? amen. And you see, God also used many different channels and many different people and many different relationships in our lives. You see, none of us is here in eyes. God places us in families. Everyone say families. So there is a reason that God places us in families. You know, those become the seedbed or the nurturing ground where God can build things into us and challenge things in our lives. Amen? And how many are married in this place? Wave at me. Amen. I'm a married man myself, and God uses my wife to put her finger to prod those things that need prodding in my life that sometimes no one else can. Because, you know, it's up close and it's personal. And so, you know, if you're married, you'll understand exactly what I mean. How God can use your spouse to really just identify and poke the things that he wants to put his finger on in a way that nobody else can. And God you know, is an expert at doing that. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron as a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Or as a man or a woman. So, God has used my life many, many times. And I, I just think of, you know, just some examples of where she's, like, sort of challenged me. So the other day, you know, just a moment, she says, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. And I, I'm not saying this, you know, and, you know, when, when the sentence starts like that, you know, uh-oh, something, something's coming down the pipeline. It's about to hit. And she said, you know, there's this thing that's sort of broken and stuff. What are you doing about when are you going to do something about it? I'm like, ooh. And it's, I know that it's me that I've been procrastinating about some things. And I can hide behind and say, well, I haven't actually got the money for it yet. So I know I'm, I'm going to do this at the end of the month when I've got some money or this, that, or the other. Well, have you found out, have you phoned somebody to get a quote for how much it's going to cost? Well, um, actually, no, I haven't. Well, why don't you just do that now? Yeah, we can't do it till the end of the month, but at least you can find out. And it's, it seems blindingly obvious, but that's one of the weaknesses in me. One of the default things that I'll procrastinate about getting some stuff done instead of like doing it straight away. But you know, she, God has placed her there so she can point her finger and she can touch on that in a way that nobody else can. Because if I hadn't told you now, you probably wouldn't know. You'd think, oh, Pastor, he's just Mr. Wonderful. He just floats on air and he just hovers, you know, like a hovercraft and it's all hunky-dory. But she, up close and personal, she can see those little things. But, you know, God does that and he plays them in our lives. So that he corrects us and refines us, amen, and sharpens us. So God's purpose is accomplished as we respond, as we participate in that. You know, in the past, I could be very defensive and I could put up a good argument and start a good debate. And as long as you're in that space and in that zone and doing that, you see, nothing changes. Someone said, you know, nothing changes 
until we change. But everything, when you change, then everything changes. Have you noticed? So quit waiting for the other person or, or stop trying to change someone else. You know, start with yourself. I need to fix the things that are broken and deal with the things, the issues in my own life first. Someone said that when you point the finger, you know, there are at least three that are pointing back to you. When you point the finger at someone else. And so God places us in families for his purposes. You know, he, right here in the church, you know, we have our pastors missing us right now. And so the pastoral ministry is to tend and to care for the sheep. And God will always give the shepherd a word that is for the sheep. Amen. But the sheep have to respond and embrace the words. You know, he, said that he leads us in green pastures. He restores my souls. So the pastor or the shepherd can lead the sheep into green pastures and they can come into those areas. But they have to open their mouth. They have to eat the food. They have to eat the grass that is being fed to them. Amen. Can you say amen? And so God places us in a safe space. I think about it as well, and I think even our children in families again. You know, we can learn from our children as well, and our children can learn from us. You know, yesterday when my wife was going, you know, one of my kids, he asked me, um, this, was, this was Friday, he says, Dad, can you take us to the movies on Saturday? Because there's this great film that's out, The Black Panther. Anyone seen it yet? <laughs> Later, that, that one's queued up, is it? Okay. And, said, and I said, you know, oh, son, I'd love to, but, wait for it now, there's a big but, I'm preaching, I'm preaching on Sunday, so I can't, so I'm going to be spending, and my wife turned to me and said, she didn't do it in front of them, but later in our closet, she said, son, no, son, she said, tell me, she said, can you really not just spend Take two hours out. Have your break time and then just go and, and take them down. Why don't you just do that? That would be better. You know, so you never know what impacts, what marks your kids. It's a simple thing. You can do this. And I reflected on what she said. And of course, it's a no-brainer. Of course I could. And so we did. <laughs> but, you know, it took her, you know, saying that to me for me to change. But I thank God for the opportunities that we have in life, you know, with our kids. For the time that we have, the, the special moments. And you know, when you look back in years to come, it's all those little, little things that make up the memories of time, of quality time that you spent with them. And so I would have missed that opportunity there. But I had an ear that could listen. And I feel that as God wants to speak to each one of us, that there are different things in our lives where God will use someone, whether it's the pastor, whether it's your spouse, whether it's another member of the family, to put their finger on things, to give you an opportunity to change and to, that will make a difference in your life. You know, God uses the workplace even. You know, we heard about work there. Sometimes, you know, your boss is just really mean and difficult to get along with. Sometimes there's a purpose that God is putting his finger on. So if you're a person maybe who's always late to work, for example, and your boss is pulling you up because you're late, yeah? How many people can relate or identify that? Not, if you're a latecomer, I'm not asking you to put your hand up if you're a latecomer, but identify the fact that if you're late, it's not a good thing. Would we all agree? Yes. 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 And so if your boss pulls you up for being late, then that's a point of correction in your life that you need to embrace and to do something about it and change. Amen. And so it's so key that we respond to all these things. You know, um, how many of us have appraisals, personal appraisals at work, in our place of work? Yeah? It's a normal practice now that, you know, after certain periods, some people have them, like, yearly. Some people have them by, you know, um, well, biannually um, in terms of just an appraisal or a performance review. But at that point, I call it the honest feedback because, again, it's a two-way thing. So the A part is what's how you think you're doing, and the B part is the boss's response to how you're doing. And they kind of put the two together, and hopefully you can find a happy compromise somewhere in the middle. Is that right? But, you know, again, God puts these 
things in our lives so that he works through them to, br- to bring out and to produce his best in our lives. I want to look at another scripture now, Hebrews in chapter 12 and verses 5 and 6. And I want to see something in these verses. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 and verse 6. Hebrews 12, 5. It says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. Now listen to this. It says, My son, or you could say my daughter, or you could put your own name there and say, Temi, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Do not despise. The ch- See, that word chasten means to discipline or to correct. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves. Everyone say, whom the Lord loves. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son, every daughter, every person whom he receives. How many does every leave out or exclude? So it leaves out and excludes nobody. How many sons and daughters of God are in the house this morning? Every single one of us. So he's talking to us. So this is God's word speaking directly to us, to you and to me right now. And so it says, do not despise. Another translation says in the Amplified, do we have the Amplified translation? I just wanted to bring that scripture up again in the Amplified, please. It says, and have you completely forgotten the divine word okay, of appeal and encouragement in which, in which you are reasoned and addressed as sons? My son, do not think lightly or scorn to submit to the correction and the discipline of the Lord. Okay? Do not, okay, nor, okay, flip, flip over, gone. Nor lose courage and give up and faint when you are reproved or corrected by him. And we'll just stop on that for now. So, do not esteem it or take it lightly. And God does this in many different channels. So if God is coming ministering you through your wife or through your spouse, your husband, or if it's your boss at work, or if it's through your children, or if it's anyone else that God is speaking through, or in, in church, your pastor, or in your cell. How many cell members do we have in the house? Where about me if you're in a cell? It's a great training ground. So he says, do not take it lightly. So often what we do is take the correction of the Lord lightly. We don't respond because we don't value it. You know, turns out I said there is value in correction. There is value in the Lord's correction. So it's good that we qualify it there. That, you know, when the Lord corrects or puts his finger on something in our lives, it's an opportunity for us to change. It's an opportunity for us to embrace the things that God is wanting to correct and speak to in our lives. And then it says, for whom the Lord loves. We can flip to the, to the 17th, to, sorry, the 6th verse. Now. For the Lord corrects and disciplines everyone whom he loves and punishes, even scourges every son whom he accepts and welcomes to his heart and cherishes. So what I I want to see is the heart of God here. That correction is out of love. So many times, our natural fathers have corrected us or challenged us in a fit of anger. And that's the wrong way to do it. And because of that, we have that concept that God is the same. So, so often, it's like, oh, you do bang and before the sentence even finishes you've had a strike or a smack at the same time and so in our minds and our hearts 
It's like doing something wrong or missing it is equated to a spanking or a beating. But the Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he corrects. And so God's correction is because he loves us. You know, someone said, if, if you love your child, you're going to correct them. Yeah? How many people love their kids here? How many people would correct them in love? Amen. Every single one of us. Because that's, that's God's way. Because he wants us to be better next time. He don't want us to make the same mistake over and over and over and over again, does he? So each one of us, we want to go onwards and upwards. That's the heart of God. And you know, God gave me a picture this way. How many of us have taken a capsule before? Any kind of capsule for anything, so medication for anything, in capsule form as opposed to a tablet. I know with capsules, one interesting thing about capsules is that the active ingredients, the medication that you need for your their body needs, maybe antibiotics is a, is a good example. They're often in capsules. But the active ingredient, how many know that it is not the outer coating or the capsule itself? It is actually inside of it, isn't it? So the active ingredient is inside the capsule. The capsule, the plasticky kind of capsule, like, is just the coating, is just the outside. And so God said, you know, that's how his word is. It's like, you know, the active ingredient in his word is inside. But the capsule is love. It just, you know, you know they're shaped, the way that they're shaped in the capsule, so that they can just glide down smoothly down your gullet. You can pop them in, and it glides down smoothly. That's on purpose. And so, God's word, okay, is medicine to our flesh. Amen? It is, by the way, it's life to those who find it is health to all their flesh. And so God puts it in a, in a capsule, and the capsule is love. It's the love of God, okay, that makes his word easy for us to swallow, that makes it easy for us there because it's um, encapsulated in love. And the love of God is reaching out to each and every one of us today, that God wants us to pay attention to his word. He wants us to receive it knowing that he loves us, amen? But if God is for you, then who can be against you? Yeah? Paul the Apostle said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And so God is always for us. So Bible says, if he's for you, then no one can be against you. I go back to that word of Anthony. He said that if God opens the door, then no man can shut it. And if God shuts the wrong doors, then no man can open it. And so with God, it's a win-win situation. You know, we know how the story ends. We've got the book from Genesis to Revelation. Guess what? God wins. Christ wins. Amen? Yes. That's, it's a done deal. And so as long as we stick to what God's word is, as long as we obey his word, as long as we embrace his correction and follow his leading, then he will continue to guide us. And, you know, God showed me a little math sum. If we look again at those verses... So if we can flick to the um, New King James Version once again, verse 5 and verse 6. Let's have those up on the board again. So Hebrews 12, 5 and 6. So it says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son in whom he receives. No, we'll st stop at that. Now skip down to verse, what's, what's um, 6 plus 5, or verses 5 and 6 added together? 11. Okay, skip to verse 11. It says, No chastening seems to be joyful at the presence, but painful. Nevertheless, everyone say nevertheless. nevertheless. Everyone say afterward. Afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So all of that is to bring us to that point that we have been trained by it, by the correction of the Lord. 
And I believe that that's, what, that's the word of the Lord for each one of us today, that God wants us to be trained by his corrective love. That in 2018, each one of us, we're on a journey together. Amen? Amen. And that by the time we get to December 2018, we're able to look back and say, look, I embraced the correction of the Lord. I embraced the training of the Lord. How many people like training? Yeah? It's good for us. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it doesn't seem pleasant as we go through it. But there's an end in mind. And it says it bears the peaceable fruit of righteousness. You know, the fruit is the end product of every you know, plant. It's this fruit that it produces. And so in the end, it will produce the fruit of righteousness in each one of our lives. And God is really speaking to each one of us today that, you know, he wants our lives to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. That every life to bear much fruit. And during the book of John, where he speaks about um, Jesus being the vine and us being the branches, yeah? And he speaks about the Father taking a pruning fork, if you like, to the branch and pruning them. You know, the pruning process is painful. If, if plants could speak, and I'm sure they have their own language, they'd be saying, ouch, when the pruning is taking place. Because it's not pleasant. It's not enjoyable to the plants at the time. But you know what? There's fruit that comes out at the end. Amen? And there is fruit that God wants to see in each one of our lives. If we want to see that fruit, then we need to go through the pruning process. Can you say amen? Shall we stand to our feet? Hallelujah. I believe that God wants to work a work in each one of us. If I can have someone on the keyboard, please. You know, and it's a work, really, of what I call corrective surgery so often in our lives. And whether that comes through a spouse, whether that comes through from your child, whether that comes through a person in your place of work, it doesn't matter. But what matters is that God is at work. You have, to be, you have to participate in the process of what God is wanting to do. You see, in the book of Psalms, and the hundred and some, 119 and the 130th verse, it says the entrance of God's word into our brings light and understanding to the simple. That's the entrance. So if we allow the word of God to enter into our, if we embrace that, amen, if we embrace the word of God and digest it, then it will produce something beautiful on the inside of us. You know, I remember Rebecca's prayer. You know, Isaac's wife in scripture. We said, if all is well with me, then why am I like this? You know, it's a classic scripture that we know so well, but it's so true. And so we need to go to God and ask him that, Lord, if all is well, then what are these things showing up in my life? And then, Lord, I'm willing to embrace the corrective process. I'm willing to embrace change so that you will be glorified in my life. Amen. How many are willing to embrace change today? Amen. I want us to just pray together just to invite the Lord, just begin to speak to the Lord right now and say, Lord, whoever you choose to use to put the finger on any issues or anything in my life that needs changing, Lord, then I'm willing and I'm ready and I'm opening up my heart so that you can do your corrective surgery on the inside of me so that I can change, so that I can be better, so that I can produce that peaceable fruit of righteousness, of right living, of right standing in my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that indeed the entrance of your word, Lord, into our hearts brings light and brings understanding to the simple. And so, Father, we have placed ourselves today as simple under your word, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, because, Lord, you are the spirit of truth. And, Lord, you reveal, Father, only because you want to heal. Lord, you don't reveal things, Lord, to expose us or to show us up. But, Lord, because you want to heal us and make us better, Father, and make us whole. 
And so, Father, Lord, today we embrace your word, Father. We embrace truth, Father. We, we, we look at our reflection in the mirror of your word, Father. And we say, have your way within us, Father. Lord, we embrace change, Father, Lord, for a new season, Lord, in our lives. Father. We declare that, Father, we are in Christ. Therefore, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Father, we thank you, Lord. Today we give you the praise. Today we give you the glory. Today we give you the honor. And we thank you, Father, that we'll never be the same. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed.